Hey, how are you guys? This is uh, JP Sarri. It's nice to uh, to be back here to make another review for another omnibus. Uh, also, I want to thank you for you know this thing taking the time. Thank you to all that um, uh, you know spend the time to watch this kind of lengthy uh, reviews. But um, it is fun for me. I really been having fun doing this. Uh, I think I, I like this a lot, and I have enjoyed this opportunity to do it. And you know, it, it's very um, you know, it makes me feel good, you know, to be able to share a lot of things with other people. And uh, that's something that I always enjoy. I, I prefer to do things not just for myself. I don't collect just for myself. I do it for, you know, to share that beauty with of the things that I collect with the people, my friends and the people around me. And especially I want to give a shout out to uh, Matthew Shorten, a uh, very young collector, very young uh, fella, a friend that I have met through YouTube. He is starting to do reviews now and um, you know he's starting so the beginning is it might be a little shaky his reviews but he's doing a good job and he knows his material and I know that he's gonna get better and better so Matthew uh, if you, when you watch this video if you watch this video uh, just keep him I'm sorry keep on going man uh, just keep doing what you're doing you're gonna be fine uh, you know I, I really like your comments I think they're very uh, you have a lot of knowledge of your pro uh, of your uh, material, so that's a good thing. And I just keep you know doing and improving, and you'll see. This is the X Men by um, Valiant Two Omnibus, like uh, and pretty much it contains the material of Chris Claremont. This is actually our the last last um, um, uh, issues that he wrote uh, of, of a lengthy, pretty much seventeen year run. Uh, pretty much it's our the last issue. So this is a great collection that kind of culminates so or finishes what he started you know pretty much 16 17 years prior to this so this is a great 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 collection uh, that has a lot of sentimental value for a lot of people but also has a history you know, value of one of the best runs if not the best run of this amazing team and also we have a you know uh, pretty much he, he contains a lot of the art of Jim Lee and I think that's one of the selling points of this book But also we have Wills Potassio a great great artist of the time right here in the back You can see it says industry superstar Clarman and Lee take Marvel mutants to new heights uh, Pretty much here you can see there's 31 issues on this and uh, this collection uh, There's a lot of runs from X Factor. You can see issues from X Factor X-Men uncanny X-Men and also, uh, you can see this beginning of X Men right there is the big uh, unfold, um, and you can see all the covers. Uh, you know, and we have some issues of Ghost Rider. We collect an X Factor um, number sixty three to number seventy on Canny X Men, uh, two seventy three to two eighty X Men number one to nine, and material from ten and eleven, and Ghost Rider uh, number twenty six to twenty seven. After you take the paper, it says right there in simple lettering X Men. Very, uh, I like this. Always oh, a symbol so iconic, you know. And X Men Omnibus. Uh, everything else pretty much is plain black. Uh, as you can see, all the Marvel Omnibuses uh, they have the same uh, format. And simple lettering X Men. And right there, it says volume number two. These Omnibuses have great quality. Uh, as you can see right here, this is an iconic image of, uh, of uh, um, X Men One when. Um, with um, Cyclops and Wolverine, and here is pretty much uh, the all the artists and the writers and everybody else that has participated in this. Uh, the mainly uh, the main reason why this collection is here um, is to give homage to uh, Chris Claremont for starters as a writer, but also we have other writers right there that, um, as you can see, some of them like Fabian Nicieza and the uh, you know the legendary John Byrne participated. Scott Lapdale that took over. Uh, X, uh, X Men after um, you know Chris left and Howard Mackey, the writer of you know famous writer of Ghost Rider. We also have in the artists and the, uh, the pencilers. You have Jim Lee, of course. You know I think the selling point of this book, Wills Potassio, also great artist of the time. Um, uh, uh, you know he's uh, he participates. He he wrote uh, you know his X Factor run was legendary at the time. He was still legendary up to this day. Klaus Johnson, John Byrne. Uh, Mark Silvestri participated also in the Uncanny X-Men number 273, Rick Donardi, Michael Golden, uh, Larry Stroman, Paul Smith, and you can see the, uh, a long list and uh, different artists right there. And, and the inkers, I want to give, I normally don't give this, there's a lot of inkers, but main, the main inker that I would like to give a shout out, a shout out or give a homage is Scott Williams. He's been an anchor for 
for you know he has worked with Jim Lee for so many years up to now up to now he's still working you know with this a lot of stuff he does and he's one of the best inkers you know inkers are so important for the art because they are the ones that after the um, the penciler does the drawing they come and kind of embellish you know what the job the work of the penciler uh, the content of this book it starts in 1991 X Factor number 63 and it continues all the way to, uh, in this case, X-Men 11 in August 1992. So you see a little over two years, um, kind of like, not not two years, but close to two years of history. The most important, I think this is the, the time where there is a big sigma within comics. Um, this is prior to the creation of um, Image Comics. This is prior to that big break um, where a lot of people left uh, Marvel Comics to uh, to follow their own dreams. And, you know, Jin Lee was one of them. Uh, Wolf Potasio was one of them. Uh, Sylvester McFarlane uh, and, and many others. Uh, in this part, as you can see, uh, there is pretty much a recap of everything that has happened prior to this. If so you're not as uh, knowledgeable of what's going on in the story, I think this is a, it's a good thing you read the whole story. It tells you what's happening, why the X-Men are where they they at at that moment when you start reading the books. And they start with X Factor. Um, you know, you know, and the, this artist pretty much this is um, Wills Wills Potassio, and you know if you if you know Wills Potassio, you know his art style is very manga manga like he has a lot of influence of Japanese art he he his app uh, he's actually is Filipino uh, and Wills is, is um, Filipino American he was born in the Philippines but he was raised here in the United States in California so um, you know his influences is, is very very heavy with animation he loves Japanese animation and you can see it in the way he draws uh, his art style has a lot of that influence very very engraved now this is a very um interesting actually issue right here the can x-men number 273 there's a lot of different artists in this 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 in this book if you go through it um you know the, everybody is here you know from uh you know john Byrne and um you know sylvester and um Jim Lee, Wills Potassio, and a lot, a lot of people too. Um, everybody participates in this, and, and the funny thing is, there's too many mutants, and actually, this is Chris Claremont writing, and you know, and also the name is or whose house is this anyway? And Chris Claremont is the one writing, but you see Wills Potassio, Jansen, you had Byrne, uh, Rick Leonardi, uh, Mark Sylvester, Michael Golden, Larry Stroman. You know, the, what's happening in this, uh, many artists participate in different different pages. Everybody's different artists, as you can see right here. I think the one we passed by the main one, I think that was Mark Sylvester. Looking at the art, you can see the different, different artists. And the question is, why there's so many uh, artists in this page why there's so many people collaborate on this well i think there's it's actual a battle i think and the, the funny thing about this is a kind of recap of this story they're trying to define themselves the x-men and says what we need to do from now on we need to come together you know there were so separated teams uh, you know uh, uh, Professor Xavier was no longer uh, pretty much uh, leading the group in that, in that moment. Uh, so there's different teams, different all created. And uh, you can see this, actually this is the art of um, uh, Leonardi. You can see that because of the expression, the sad eyes that he normally draws in his characters. You know, you can see some of it. You know, if you're kind of familiar with some of the art, you're going to be able to kind of know where it comes from and who is the one actually doing the drawing. So in reality, there's, there's already a battle within Marvel comics and this issue kind of reflects that you know that's not something that happens you know uh, when you know you're being um, the writer for a book for so long you kind of have the authority of the power to really kind of define what's going on and you have freedom to kind of express yourself and you know by that time you know with Chris Claremont after so long many th these issues you know he there's a constant battle he's trying to define himself and um, trying to find the reason, um, you know, he's trying to, um, you know, this, you know, to ask the question, who is the one in charge of this book? Because, you know, by that time, there was a lot of uh, hype because of art uh, from art, you know, for artists like Jim Lee and Wolf Potassio and everybody else. So there was a lot of a ship of power, you know, be prior to this, the most important part of a comic was not just only the art, but also the writing. Oh, I love this um, Magneto, you know, I can tell you one thing, nobody else has draw Magneto as magnificent as Jim Lee. I think he is the best drawer of this character. It, it shows, you know, so powerful and so strong, you know, and, and, you know, and as you can see, Jim Lee, top of his game as always, you know, his art, 
it is, it is very magnificent with that time. Uh, what he was doing with the Uncanny X-Men. You know, so there's a shift in power. Trying to figure it out exactly who is the one that doing the job. Who is the one in charge of, of things, you know. And I think there was a power because actually editors and Marvel was telling him pretty much um, to Chris Claremont saying, well, well, you need to add, you know, there's co-plotters, uh, co you know, they have to participate with you. You have to participate with them. So in reality, it was no longer Chris Claremont really writing for himself. He had to accept what everybody else had to say. So there was like a few writers really writing, an, a, you know, a, a book. And he became a really... A, 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 a tiresome thing for somebody that has been in control for so long you know you got to the point that he says you know what first of all who is the one writing who is the one in charge so there's a shift in power where reality you know Jim Lee uh, do, let's let's be honest people like Jim Lee like Marcel Vestry people like you know this young artist like um, you know they took the comics into a new level commercial commercial wise you know um, beautiful read this is one of the very iconic covers number 275 I like the art. I like, you know, you can see um, Jim Lee style right there. You know, he, he does Wolverine in a way that is, it is extremely magnificent. But as you can see, uh, um, it, you know, and they're here on the, and the Shi'ar Empire actually trying to re rescue um, um, uh, Professor Xavier. Uh, and actually, there is a very interesting, um, actually, story going on. And actually, there's two stories going on that's what's happening. Well, in the Savage Land, actually, um, we have Magneto. Uh, you know, you know, as you can see, you know, it's, it's what's happening. So the thing is this: going back to what I was talking about, I just get distracted a little bit looking at this art. You know, the art is so, so powerful. You know, I can tell you one thing. You know, Jim Lee does an art that is extremely, extremely powerful. And you know, and as you know him well, and you have seen him well, and as you can see right there, um, you know. You know, with the claws extended, you know, it's just, it's just an amazing art, you know, the gladiator, you know, beautiful the way he does too, gladiator, um, like I said before, you know, I think I like John Burns, uh, representation of gladiator, but this is, is uh, this is also iconic, you know, uh, you know, Jim Lee was top of the game, you know, artists like this, you know, they become so popular, and they were, they drove the, you know, the sales big, big time. So, because they became so powerful and iconic at that moment, there, there was a lot of, uh, you know, shift in power, you know, like people were looking into the art more they were looking into the writing. And, you know, sadly, you know, it is good. I love the art, you know, I can tell you, I love Jim Lee's art, I love all this artist's art, I love everything that they did, you know. But the truth is, is that with that shift of power, also the change of tone of the writing uh, came really, uh, it started shifting, you know, it became less introspective, you know, less into trying to analyze the character and more into, um, you know, doing just things. As you can see right here, this is actually, uh, going back to X Factor, this is B's, you know, very awesome image. This is actually the Inhumans, this is X Factor, Will's Potassio. Um, you know, the art, like I was telling you, it's just, it's just magnificent, you know, that time, uh, even though there was like, I would say that the coloring nowadays is even much better than this. Uh, I, I personally enjoy um, this art, the drawing itself is just magnificent. I think we don't have the same art as we used to. That's a big, big colossus. Um, you know, and um, you know, it's, as you can see, um, like, I, like I was telling you, um, there was a shift in power. There was it was a change. You know, uh, artists were. They, there was a feeling that artists were taking advantage of by these companies. They were making a lot of money out of them. So when that shift of power came about, um, um, very sleek figure right there. Uh, Will's always making those sleek figures. Um, there was this shift in power and um, the necessity to really change things around. I uh, always like this. Uh, actually, this is Professor Xavier, and this is actually Colossus right here on his back. A very, very, very cool, cool looking suit and everything, you know. And that's something that Wills had. He gave this the style, this this kind of sophisticated style to his art. That um, that uh, I think that's what a lot of people love about him. If you know Wills, um, you know he was a he had so much future in the comics, but a lot of things hold him back. First of all, he had a, a problem with his sister that he um, um, that got sick and the, you know she passed away. So he left the scene for a while to take care of his ill sister, 
and um, that took him years really um, out of the out of the equation of doing comics. Uh, also, um, also then he he was sick um, a few years back. It's been a while, but probably I don't know how many years, but it's been a while. He he got sick. He had uh, uh, they found that he had some type of disease, some uh, pancreas uh, type of cancer, and uh, thank God he recovered from that, and he's back again into comics, but. You know, all these years um, that he was not into it, you know, uh, you know, a lot of people kind of lost track of Wills. Uh, but, you know, he was a great artist and, you know, he actually was a very close friend and he's still a close friend of Jim Lee and they work together. Um, they actually share um, uh, a studio back in the day uh, along with Scott Williams. So, you know, they're friends, you know, they're, they're close friends and, you know, and uh, that's good, you know, all these artists, you know, shared this friendship and, you know, they all left together to when, you know, a lot of the people went to create uh, Image Comics, Lorna Dane, um, Polar, Polaris, you know, very sexy and hot there, strong guy. Um, you know, all these characters are here, so that's a good thing. Um, and here is when things switch, when things start getting a lot better. This is X-Men volume, I'm sorry, X-Men issue number one. Here, in, this collection includes the different covers, as you can see, the different covers that came about. This is one of the most iconic comic uh, comics of all time. This one sold, uh, it was actually sold 8 million copies. But this 8 million copies, of course, they didn't go to 8 million people. It went to, the, the, that was what was ordered to the different, um, you know, vendors, 8 million. A lot of people, they, they consider that probably the, the sales were around between 3 to 4 million copies, you know. Because the truth is, is it was the same issue, just different covers. Um, but it is, it is it's great, and here's the big poster. Um, very, you know, it's nice that they include this in this collection. It gives you an idea of this, uh, the impact of this story. And this is, if not the most iconic comic of all time. The, 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 the story, it's okay. It's still, this is the last Chris uh, Claremont doing the work, the last pieces of his work. Um, and as you can see, there is a Magneto, very, uh, that's where they took the, you know, the, the statue of Kota Vukia, uh, by Eric Sosa, the statue, uh, this, this is actually taken from this, this, this is special, um, this issue, this image right here. Uh, this is a very iconic image of, you know, in this Magneto right here. Um, the story, it's, it's all right, you know, I think Chris, Comer, uh, Chris is already getting to that point where, you know, his stories are not as driven or as powerful and reality people are not paying too much attention to that anymore. They're more in focus with the art and as you can see, Jim Lee took this character to a new level of design. You can see the very iconic white costume of a rogue and every, every member, you know, beautiful rogue as always, you know, he drew it in a in a way that people were so into the drawing, into the art, that they just didn't care if, you know, you were selling potatoes or doing anything else. I always like this iconic image of Rogue. I think it's a beautiful image of Rogue. They are amazing and see Colossus big and humongous, you know, and with this recoloring that they have done to this omnibuses, the, the paper is, it has much better quality, but the art, the color is, it shines more, it's brighter. Uh, it, it's a great, great collection. And if you want to see it in this format, you know, I have this, I read this in, you know, in, in, in my in my devices because, you know, I have this downloaded into my computer, into my, uh, you know, all the devices that I have, handheld devices. So I read it constantly. But just going back to this format, it is, it's, 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 a, it's a treat. You know, it's something that you enjoy because, um, you know, that's how we grew up with, you know, reading this, you know, and as you can see, Psylocke's so beautiful there. Um, you know, just going through the story, I can just uh, go you know one by one by one and show you a lot of it and I'm sure you already read a lot of this or you have the opportunity to read it but looking at it in paper it is just it's an amazing experience you know looking at it you know as you can see right there Psylocke um, oh you know it, it is it's gorgeous you know the art is gorgeous you know everything that was done uh, I think like I like I was telling you here's the gallery very famous gallery of villains the villains gallery you can see very iconic um, you know, uh, Juggernaut. I love the way he he drew Juggernaut, and I'm so glad that actually Kotobukiya and Sosa, Eric Sosa, is gonna come up with a new statue, and I'm gonna jump on it. And as you can see, all a uh, big uh, array of different villains of the story. You know, it it is it is a great. This is art is made by, uh, of course, Jim Lee. And as you can see, there is another cover right here. 
it says a blast from the past and as you can see uh, uh, wonder girl um, uh, I think I've heard <laughs> for how they call it uh, you know this is um, Jean Grey um, you know the original uh, the costume of uh, Cyclops uh, you know uh, Professor Xavier you know it's kind of beautiful I like the way he did Jean Grey you know she looks so those elongated legs you know that's some some very iconic part of her beautiful beautiful girl and as you can see there's another cover right there you know with all the x-men you're having fun in the pool house right there and probably in the uh, at the xavier institute and uh, you know it's beautiful too bad that here you cannot really see rope but she looks so gorgeous there too and of course Silock. and you know that's nice that they have these posters and there's another villains i can see uh, the hand you know mega red that i was introduced actually in the next episodes captain britain you know, uh, you know, Archangel, uh, Warpath, um, Lorna, you know, a lot of the characters, you know, famous, each one of them has been so famous, Domino, you know, um, you know, it's, it's just, it's amazing, you know, it's just going to the stories, you know, um, some of the members of the X-Force, you know, it's great, Beast, um, here, I love this, you know, I can, like I was telling you, Jim Lee was top of his game. Chris was doing his final run, you know, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, uh, yeah, still Chris still doing this part, you know, and in this final run, you know, this confrontation with the acolytes, you know, from, you know, um, the Fabian Cortez right there, you know, um, you know, all this, you know, and confronting Magneto, it's just, it's the culmination of a, a long run, uh, the longest run and a very iconic run that was done, you know, amazingly by Chris Claremont, you know, so many teams, so many artists came about, came from this time, from this era, you know, what he has done, you know, cannot be unmatched. I don't think uh, with the new formats of artists nowadays and the way Marvel pursuits and DC pursuits and all the companies pursue things, I think they're trying to protect themselves from what happened back then because, um, you know, it was a... It was a change, you know. It was a dramatic change when a lot of when image was created, um, and they didn't want to just lose that power anymore. So in reality, the runs are long, smaller nowadays. You know, uh, a lot of these companies just allow artists just to participate for a uh, short period of time, and then they jump to somebody else. That way, there's no power given to one person. But you know, uh, uh, we understand that principle. Um, uh, you know, as a businessman, as a person that do, do business, you know, I understand the principle. Uh, but the truth is that, you know, um, you know, Chris did an amazing job. And as you can see, I love always this, the image right here of, um, in this case, Jean Grey and Forge right there. Uh, it was the end of an era. It was an, uh, the end of Chris Claremont as a writer and actually is written right there. 1976 to 1991, it was the end, you know, for one of the greatest if not the greatest writers of all time uh, great art and writer for the x-men um you know he was completely done and um as you can see this is starting a new thing and actually john burner was called legendary john burn he was called to actually write um for this and i love this cover and he wrote for the next two issues and actually uh he wrote you know and he was the one to actually introduce omega red to all of us and i like this actually that i can tell you one thing the team up between john Byrne writing and chris uh, i'm sorry and jim lee's art you know it was superb i think this is the part what i enjoy the most you know i love the close-ups his faces ex the face expressions are so natural you know the muscularity you know it's just so natural i can tell you that jim lee knows how to draw women and he draws them in a way that they're not you know just like um you know just models like you know probably like you know like Sylvester does or some others artists he does them in a way that they're very uh even though they're beautiful you know all the feature natural features of a woman they're also very strong very athletic and that's one of his pluses the way he does it's like it's very believable you believe it when you see it that the power powerful women you know they're not just just some you know peanuts doing here and there you know there is a, there's an infusion of power you know he has so much energy you know his art has so much energy that really infuses that and I, I really enjoy when he he participated there there's very iconic cover very iconic image between the fight between Omega Red and and, and you know Wolverine he did big covers the big posters the big images you know it, it is an amazing it is extremely beautiful extremely amazing looking at this art you know 
to be honest, to me, this is the best volume of the whole collection of all the X-Men. This is the best. If you really want to see the, 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 you really don't, you have the money just to buy one and you just want to buy one, I would recommend you to go for this one. Um, if you're like me and you like to have everything, you know, then you can have, you know, both. But I would recommend you to have this one because, you know, the, the art, if you're looking for the art, if you like Jim Lee, you know, this is what you're going to get. You know, the best part of Jim Lee from the X-Men. Jim Lee has so much, put so much detail from the sweat right there to the hairs to the shading, everything. The detail is there. You know, it's something, there's a lot of work. And, you know, in order to do all that, you know, you just have to be able to know exactly what you're doing and really love this pose of, of silo you know amazing you know he's just you know given um uh, omega red a uh, run for his money you know it's just it's amazing you know beautiful you know the art is so beautiful you know she is doing her thing right there you know it's just it's just amazing you know the truth is, the truth is that you know the art was already in a position where it was beautiful i love that you know you know like i said you know and i'm gonna repeat it again over and over over again you know jim lee knew how to draw uh wrote, um how to you know draw um you know uh logan you know in an amazing amazing way i love this image right here even uh, you know cyclops is just all um amazed by the beauty of you know in this case um some years back there was a statue um uh, on this costume from bro very iconic i think if you can find them nowadays you can find them you know it's, it's not cheap um it's not really cheap. Um, I remember that I saw that in my one in my comic store years ago, and you know it was not cheap then. And I had seen him on eBay, and it's not cheap. And as you can see, Bishop right there. You know, I can tell you one thing: Bishop, drawn by 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 Jim Lee, was was a, was was a fantastic image. And I'm waiting for actually for um, the Bowen. Uh, bishop that is coming out soon. I think it's gonna have the old the, the sense of the classic bishop I've never been a fan of the uh, of the crossovers because it, it was uh, you know, it's a money-making thing um, It gets to the point that you know, you, you are a fan of just one comic book And that's why you go and purchase constantly But then all of a sudden when they do the crossover that means that in order to really have continuity for the story You have to buy another Story in this case Ghost Rider that I've never been a fan of and you have to buy other books and that becomes a little complicated if you really don't have the funds uh, and back in the day i didn't have the funds so you know i was just a kid you know i was uh, you know a teenager or i was uh, probably you know i don't remember yeah i was a teenager so you know it's just not what i wanted to do you know and you know and the crossover just forced you to buy more stuff and it was successful for you know, for Marvel and for DC Comics, they, they did that a lot. But the truth is, a lot of people just criticize it because, you know, you just don't want to get involved. Because what it is, is push you to go buy another comic and then introduce another uh, characters and introduce other storylines. And, you know, then you have to get, you get hooked to buy more and more and more. And then you end up buying so many comics that you really don't care about. Just because you want part of the story of another one. So, you know, it was something that nobody really cared too much about it. And... Honestly, I didn't. And this is number 11, the last issue right there. Uh, very iconic. Jim Lee doing the drawing. And there's also other artists in invited. You know, actually, Scott Williams is not the one doing the inking. So you can see the difference. And you can see the difference between Scott Williams and this new anchor. You can see the power that actually inking can do. You know, it was stronger. When Scott Williams does the inking, he does it in a way that is so strong that it is amazing. And, and that's it, you know. And I pretty much... It, it finishes this is the last issue for Jim Lee and after this pretty much he went to create image comics with with um, Larson you know with everybody else uh, even uh, close call Chris Carmen was part of the team that the people that left and a lot of people left you know they were not satisfied no more with the dead thing and you know good for them you know create image and create a new era Let's see the covers you know a lot of covers all these covers are by Jim Lee there's a lot of uh, different drawings and sketches, you know, I like this, you know, I like that they include all these bonuses for for really Gives I think more bank for your buck, you know, all this is it is amazing I think this material whatever price you pay for this is very worthy. I love this cover I, I don't think it was ever done. I think this was done by uh, wizard um, For the Jim Lee Millennium Edition hardcover I think this actually came out on that one and it is just beautiful, you know looking at that, you know Colossus big size you know the the beauty of in this case wolverine and you can see the actual beauty uh the sexiness of salog it is it is amazing i love what he has done the art his art you know jim lee 
you know, Jin Lee is the man, put it this way. You know, looking at that beauty right there of Rogue and the Savage Land. Here on the side, there's another beautiful cover uh, for, you know, Wolverine. I think there's a hundred cars here, uh, if I'm not mistaken, or something like that, you know. But there is so many, that it's actually the, the front and the back of all the characters he grow. And it is just, it's just beautiful, you know, looking at it. You know, I think it, it was a great idea that they include that, you know. We don't collect those trading cards anymore, you know. Kids don't do that anymore nowadays. They do all the, all the type of trading cards. And here is a recoloring. Uh, it, it is just art after art. The inclusion of all this art, you know, is amazing. The first time I saw this, actually, I look at the art, and the first thing I thought was Chris Bocello. And actually, looking at this, actually, this kind of gives an inspiration of Chris Bocello art, you know, that I, I, I really enjoy his, his art, too very comic like but you know looking at this I'm so impressed this is actually the, the actually the cover that is used for the special edition if you purchase it a very nice cover too I really enjoy it as you can see in this unfold it unfolds the whole cover I think it's a very nice addition they did that to it but this is the fun part actually you turn this around this is the new edition that was done actually now um, Actually, that Thomas Mason actually recolor and actually comes in the special collections that we have nowadays. It is it is a beautiful idea. It is extremely beautiful. It is actually very nice touch. They add this to the collection, make it special. You know, uh, in my case, and also there is another cover right here. Beautiful, and the same treatment is done here in the back. So that's nice if you want to just actually take it out. I just keep them like that. You know, I think, you know, they deserve to do better. Now, going into retrospective and looking at this collection. Looking at the past 20 years, because this is close to over 20 years of story in the comic world. You really have a sense of what happened during that time growing up, you know. I was probably around 13, 12, something like that when this happens. It was a very convulsive time for comics, but it was very, uh, it was fun to read comics during that time. Looking at it, it's just amazing. You can say something, and I probably some people will kind of correct me with about that, and they will not like my comment, but it's the truth. There is a time period that is before and after Jim Lee. I think Jim Lee defines the culture, defines and defines in reality what happened with comics for good and bad. Um, before Jim Lee, there was a lot of power between writers. Writers had the power to create stories. And you know, artists were part of it too. Uh, people like John Byrne was a great uh, artist, but also a writer. And I think that's why he had the power and control of what he wrote, you know, when he did the Fantastic Four. But there was not a, a really a division of it. Now I think the art was even improved beyond that. It was create, you know, it was um, when new artists came about. The art took to a new level where people were so attracted to it, and the power was shifted from a perspective of a writer to a perspective perspective of an artist for good and bad. You know, the art was improved ten times. Fault. It was much better, but the writing started lacking because there was no more power. They were not as in control, the writers. And I think up to this day, we still have this problem. Well, you know, I really appreciate you take, took the time really to go through this lengthy video. I uh, hope you uh, really enjoy it. I hope, you know, you answer some of your questions. Um, the truth is that, you know, this is uh, X-Men has really shaped the industry in, in ways that people couldn't imagine. Many young readers nowadays, comic readers, don't really know this background. They just know the art, but they don't know the background. Uh, and it's important to really know it. So I recommend you, if you can have the opportunity to read this, go back and read them. You know, it's so, it's so iconic. Uh, they're so powerful. Uh, I think uh, prior to that, you know, after that, the stories continue on and they, they, they have changed. I don't think X-Men has, has as much pull as it used to. You know, it was very powerful. It was the most popular. You had to see this. Uh, this book was read, you know, created back in the 60s by Stanley and Jim Kirby. Didn't really hold strong. It was just there. You know, it was like a cult type of book. People didn't really care too much about it. Um, uh, but it was in the 70s when new writers came about and they changed the whole perspective. And then Chris Claremont came in 1976 and he took over, you know, and 
pretty much for 16 years he shaped the the whole uh, storyline taking this kind of like um you know like second hand type of story second thing people didn't care too much and put it into the first place became the number one seller in the industry and by the time you know Jim Lee is here you know he just kind of reaping the benefits of what was done but he is selling a million copies just one issue you know it is an amazing story but so everything starts from one man vision you know and I think that's an important thing uh, it's something that we have to do. We have to say, you know, personally, I have to say thank you to Chris Claremont for doing what he did and for his art, and Jim Lee also, and Will Spatasio, and everybody else for being part of a, an amazing part and a magical part of our childhood. So I thank you for watching this video, um, you know, and uh, if you have any questions, please leave your questions below. If you have any comments, leave your comments. Uh, you know, if you have anything to say, uh, I'm always open to hear people's comments. Uh, and, and thank you for watching. Have a great day. Great, you know, if you watch this uh, over the weekend, have a great weekend. Um, enjoy, you know, enjoy life. Enjoy your, enjoy your family. Have fun. And uh, I'll see you in the next review. And have a good one, my friends.